Why, hello! I am the scuff, for I am also the master! And I'm also the maid today! Ha <laughs> 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 Hello, my fellow to Boy Script Teller. Welcome to the stream where I read, uh, where today I'm going to be reading stories about entitled parents. Because I feel like it. And I like these stories. I, I'm not kidding. There's a lot of times where I would like go to... <laughs> I used to love watching YouTube videos of people reading the Entitled Parent Thread stories, and so that's what we're doing today! Hi! I know, I get it, Colin. I look hot as fuck. It's understandable. This level of hotness cannot be... cannot be contained. I understand. Also, if you notice, I've got some upgrades to my stream. I now have little fellas down there that I can stomp on. So if any of y'all require stompies, they're right there. Also, some of you motherfuckers looking up my skirt like some goddamn perverts. Goddamn you. <laughs> So, uh, uh, yeah, that's what's going on today. Hello. <laughs> I'm hoping the BGM isn't too loud. I'm just going to keep that rolling the whole time. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. What I am going to do, though, is make it so that I can... That's audio properties, so I can hear it both there and here. Just uh, put this over here real quick. Because uh, I like Roku's music, actually. I actually like the BGM and make Roku. Do monitoring output. There we go. Close. Sweet. Now we can both listen to the jammy jams made by Ichiroko. Because Ichiroko makes some dope jams. Don't tell me otherwise. Where's the volume? Yes, it does. I don't want it to be too loud for the stream, though. Uh, that might be a bit too loud. We're gonna. We're just gonna keep it down a little bit. Yo, what up, Law? What up, Law? <laughs> Hell yeah, look how his foot. Ah! You bitch. You'd hit a scrub maid? You'd hit your scrub maid? How fucking dare you? Little shit. Motherfucker. But you know what? You know what? Which one's, which one's law? Which one's law? Look at you. <gasps> hey, you son of a bitch. Look what I'm gonna do to you. Fucking shake you around over here, yeah? Yeah, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Huh? 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 Oh, I just lost him out of the screen. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wee! I can just throw law out of the way. I can bully my chat back. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Let's go. Also, I'm the only one that is duck or goose. Goose right here. That is me. I am the good duck. For I am the ultimate evil. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, hello, my fellows. It's your boy Scriptello. We're gonna have a stream where I pl where I read about entitled parents and have fun little chats with y'all while it's all going down. Hope y'all enjoy yourselves. Like to think y'all will. Can I change Pokemon? Yeah, if you scroll down to my About Me, they should have all the Pokemon right there that you can choose, or all the things that you can choose. Uh, so if you go just scroll down in the About Me section, you'll see the other options, and you can uh, look through the out to find the different things you can turn into. I actually don't know how it works on mobile, though, so that might be on you guys. I'm pretty sure there's a command here for that as well that I just don't remember how to use, so... I'm just gonna... I'll just leave that to you, okay? I'll just leave that to you. You know, next time Law is being... Also, I learned a cool thing about this, is I can do this, grab this, grab you, and just, like, just hang you right here on the side, see? Now I have a Law hanging on the side of the screen. Because sometimes, that, you know, sometimes when someone's grounded, I'm just going to put them in the corner and put them in jail. I have a little jail cage for you guys. So when y'all are being little buttheads, I'll put y'all in jail. Wait, wait, let me, let me show you guys jail. Where's jail? Uh, letters, why are you so small? I need bigger letters so I can read you better. The letters did not grow by doing that. Oh, no. Uh... Shit, where'd, where'd jail go? Ah, oh, there's jail. See? <laughs> there's jail. So if y'all keep being little shits, you get thrown in there. Actually, I'll make jail a little smaller. Jail doesn't need to be that size right now. I'm just gonna shrink it a bit. He's gotta go whoop. See? Now there's jail. So when any of y'all be motherfuckers, y'all go in there. For some reason, Sega Dreams decide to trap themselves in there. But you know, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Just boom. There you go. I'll just leave you there for now. You know? You know? Just gonna, just gotta do that. La lore, hello, I'm actually a D-Watt. 
that has human speech. Yes, you are. Boop. I booped you too. Booped you right in the nose. Right on this new. Look at that. Boop. I boop. I boop, little bean. Ha <laughs> ha. Bitch. <laughs> okay, well. But yes, that's what we're going to be doing today. Today we are going to be reading some entitled parent stories because, I'll be honest, I actually do enjoy these stories. I personally do think they're a lot of fun to read. I have not read any of those ahead of time, so uh, hopefully they don't say none of the no-nos and things will be fine. You know? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Alrighty, so we're gonna read this story right now real quick first. Mom tried mom tried getting a loan using my social security number. Okay, that's a way to start things. Ah Hmm. Okay, that's already seeming rather sus as a start, but you know we're gonna we're gonna see what else goes on here. Um, FYI, sorry if my grammar is bad. Typing this out on a phone. Anyways, to start it off, my family has always been very poor at the point where we didn't eat at home for a week at on most months, and even with that, even with that, my mother has always refused to get a job. She has her bachelor's degree and everything, but even with that, she refuses to work. A bachelor's degree and still no job. What the fuck? I'm a twin. It's obvious she uh, sees me as the mistake child. She would never see say it, but you can tell. You can just tell with the way she talks to me. Although she has never treated me badly, she always gives me the cold shoulder and shows no emotion towards me. Yes, she's my mother, but she has never been a never been a parent. Anyways, I'm 19 now, about to graduate and join the Navy. And in my Navy contract, I'm going to get a 25k bonus. For some reason, she feels like it's her money. What the fuck? And I should uh, give it to her to the point where she keeps borrowing money from my siblings to pay bills and telling them I'll pay them back. She went to New York and contract uh, contracted scabbies from a dude and... What the fuck? Scabbies? Contracted scabbies from a dude and gave it to the entire household, even the dogs. And since one of the dogs are mine, she sees it fit I pay. She sees it fit I pay for their treatment. And with that, she tried using my social security number to get a loan to help the dogs but was declined, and it really made me upset that she was willing to put me in debt and not even bother telling me about it. Really left a sour taste in my mouth, and I feel like the world is against me. P.S. I'm not even working right now or anything. I'm poor as my mother, but it's just crazy to me that she would do that. Yeah? That's that's known as being a shit human being. That's, that's fucked up. What the hell? Not only this is coming from someone who also got thrown into a bucket of debt because of uh, parents' poor decisions. But, you know, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, like, that's some bullshit, man. First off, that's fraud. Like, the parents trying to take her identity and use that to get a loan. Like, that, that's fraudulent. Like, you, you don't allow that. That is not okay. <laughs> Like, holy shit, man. Like, how scummy do you have to be to cause that behavior? Like, holy fuck. Also, I'm gonna move myself a little bit more to the side real quick, because I'm, uh, doop, doop. That does mean I have to put my, I have to move tits a little to the side, too, as well. Okay, tits, I need you to, um, make yourself visible so I can move you and I get hit in the face with more things later. Uh, is it this way? Yeah, it is this way. There we go. Uh, up, up, up. Ha ha! Okay, now things are fine. I'm no longer covering more things. <laughs> all right, 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 all right. But no, yeah, scummy behavior. Parents should never be forcing their children in debt. I'm gonna say that right now. I think it's complete bullshit when parents think that they're owed shit every single time. Can you spar someone with stream avatars? Um, I believe there's a battle royale thing. I just don't remember how to do it. Uh, let me look that up real quick. Let's look this up. Let's look this up. Uh, stream avatars. Battle Royale. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Smart Charge Battle Royale. How do I do this, though? Uh, added avatars. This text is too fucking tiny. Let me make this a little bigger. I have old man eyeballs. I need to read by making things double their size. 
Okay, it says exclamation point battle royale. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, uh, there we go, everybody! Battle royale! Fight to the death! Fight to the death! Fight to the death! Fight to the death! Kick each other's asses, motherfuckers! Let's go! Of course, I am going to be the victories because I said so. I could also do this, just like, uh... You know, just because I am the god, I can drop a bomb right here and be like, Yo, fuck you. I can drop a bomb right here and be like, Explosive- No, Cubone, get away! Explosive! I was naming you Cubone. I was just after Saribot. Oh, Saribot kicked his ass. Whoops. <laughs> uh... You know, Kowlin is winning right now. Damn. Actually, this is a pretty close bout at the moment. Look at these guys. Look at these little guys. Yo, is that a surprise little bob thing? I didn't drop that. Oh, Law might have this. Law might have this. Wait, Law actually fucking got it. Holy shit. No. <laughs> Damn it, I tried to blow him up. It was too late. <laughs> Well, look at that. Look at that. Law got victory. Law got victory. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. Let's just boop. Look at this boy. Bonk. I can I can slingshot him and just go, Whoa. silly scrub. I'm immune to bombs. You son of a bitch. How dare. I forgot these things can talk. <laughs> I forgot these things can talk. <laughs> Oh, I completely forgot about that. But there you go. It's just an exclamation point battle royale. I'm pretty sure there's one for slots too. Uh, I think it was like something like that. Slots. There we go. Slots. And you can like bet points and stuff. Do little rolly rolls. Like my guy's currently gambling at the moment. Look at this. I could feed my gambling addiction with this. Just do that, and then uh, since I didn't really put any money on there, I can do slots 500. Let's do that. Oh, my duck is thinking about it. He's thinking, he's thinking. I don't have enough money for that. Well, damn, I'm gonna go with slots five. Cause I know I have five. I know I have five. Don't tell me I don't. Don't tell me I'm broke. Okay, I guess I might be broke. Well, fuck. <laughs> oh, that's cause Law's doing slots. That, that explains it, that explains it. Has won five from the slots. Damn, you won back your money. Let's go. Okay, but no, yeah, uh, shitty parents thinking they owe, thinking their children owe them stuff and they, uh, rob. That's robbery. Those people exist too. I fucking hate those. How my mom hit me because she made... How my... How my mom hit me because she made me cry. Uh... I'm gonna skip that one. Family demanding and controlling over how I dress as an adult. Hmm... I'm trying to find more stories of, like, kids being crazy. My mom lied all my life. These titles are interesting. They're, like, getting my attention, but they're not, like, the best. Let's go to the top. Let's go for hot. Let's see what's hot. What's a hot story? Family demanding and controlling over how I dress as an adult. Ah, that was getting a lot of uploads. Okay, guess guess we'll read this one, then. Uh... 21 female. I haven't seen my father and stepmother in five years after struggling with a controlling and emotional abusive environment growing up. I've grown a lot in uh, personality, body, and opinion since then. The last time I was with this side of my family, I wore high-waisted jeans and, cropped sweater and a crop sweater. I was not developed and didn't really have breasts or hips. I reached for a glass, which caused my sweater to lift and show a small bit of my midriff. And my stepmom freaked out claiming I was being disrespectful at her household. Inappropriate and giving my siblings unchristian influences. She forced my father to sit me down and give me a talk about modesty, etc, etc. It was finally the last straw. I have a lot more stories about my childhood. Granted, I was 16, but my bio mother purchased the sweater for me and did not think it was all inappropriate to wear. Fast forward to now, as an adult at 21, owning my own house and car, completing school, and making a name for myself. One of my siblings was request 
has requested me to visit their, for their birthday. I agreed as I hold nothing against my younger siblings and am excited to try and be a beacon of independence for them to look up to. Tattoos, piercings, and attitude included. Hell yeah. I was surprised this morning to wake up to a message from my stepmother reminding me to respect their household. To respect their household and their Christian views by dressing, mo by dressing modestly and conservative, which took me right back to that moment when I was 16 being shamed about having a stomach to show. I am now a woman with large breasts and hips and no matter what I wear, my curves will show what I am, in fact, an adult. She requested I send her photos of what I planned to pack, which just rubbed me the wrong way. I chose whatever in my closet seemed the most conservative, and shockingly, she seemed okay with it. So rather than wear the cute crop top, I have recently been into, both cool for the summer and also helping me overcome my previous insecurities. I opted for some tank for some tank top jeans, a few t-shirts, t-shirts, and a dress that shows off my spine tattoo. I am here asking y'all if you think I was I will be ridiculous in front of my entire family about breasts in the top and the tank top for my jeans being too tight and what all comebacks you guys might have. I understand it's their household, but it's my body, and I just feel like I'm being criticized, not because I'm my modest, but because my stepmom just uh, has something against me. I need to mentally prepare for this trip so that I don't make any anxiety and depression. I've worked hard to control into tailspin. All right. No, yet. Like, I, I, this is very much just a Karen. This very, very Karen-like behaviors. I'm not a big fan of the Karen-like behaviors. Oh boy, now these type of people. Oh my god, right? This is not... This is sacrilegious of you. How dare you disrespect my Christian values. Like, uh, I haven't run into many of them in a while just because I haven't worked in retail in a while, but I remember running into a lot of those back when I worked in retail. They were kind of a pain in the butt. I will not deny that. Like, my, my cheeks clench every time I hear someone with that kind of attitude. They, they, they are the worst. But, you know, we, we carry on. We carry on. We carry on. Nothing nothing too crazy. Nothing too saucy at the moment. Hmm. I feel like it's because everyone's moved to MI the asshole. Which we'll probably read some of those a little later, too. Oh, I'll read some more entitled parent stories. I was hoping there were some more stories about them getting their, uh, them getting their just desserts, though. It's literally just been stories about people being shits. Maybe it's entitled children. Let's look for that. Let's look for that. Uh, Entitled Parents is the one that I'm, that I'm reading in right now. Entitled Bitch. Entitled People. Uh, nothing too crazy again. Alright, we'll read like two more of these and then we'll see if any of these catch our attention. Aside from that, then we'll see. I'll see check out some I'm out of the Asshole threads after that. Entitled Aunt Ruins My Birthday. Birthday over me getting a new job. Wait, what the fuck? Just by them getting a job? What the fuck? Karen boss battle, right? <laughs> this is going to be a very long, a very, very long read. So I do de deeply apologize for that. However, it has been well over a month and I'm honestly still not over this because it hurts so much. I made a post on Am I the Asshole to uh, see if I was in the wrong, like, Entitled Aunt said I was, but could not fully explain how she reacted in full words and why I was scared to even tell her. So here we go. Ooh, this is an Am I the Asshole that turned into an entitled parent. Hell yeah. Okay, this sounds interesting. My aunt is nice enough as things go, but she is very much a woman who loves to make things about herself. She's very quick to pull the victim card or getting absolutely angry slash willing to hold a grudge whenever we tell her how the things she does is not okay. What do I mean by that? Let me give a few minor examples. These are the minor examples? Holy shit. <laughs> These minor examples are like regular ones. <laughs> like the regular stories, holy shit. All right, all right. We, we haven't learned the job yet. We'll see what the job is. But to be honest, they could be a stripper or a porn star for all I care, but if it makes them happy, they should be able to enjoy it. They shouldn't be shamed for it. I'm gonna say that right now. Whenever I or my grandmother bought EA but entitled on a gift, she always either did not like it or had an excuse for why she, not, she did not want it. 
oh, I don't wear that kind of perfume anymore. I already have a t-shirt like this, but I guess I can return it for something else. Thanks for the candle, but I have no sense of smell, so I can't really smell it. However, I do not like the smell. Yes, she was, yes, she actually said that, oh my god. However, on my granny's birthday, Entitled Aunt gave her a digital picture frame where people could send photos digitally, but she honestly did not enjoy it because it was hard to understand, and she preferred just seeing them on Facebook. She called Entitled Aunt to tell her she appreciated it but wanted to take it back and give my aunt the money back. Entitled Aunt cried over the phone, talked about how I am such a horrible daughter and how every time I get a gift, you hate it. Which is never true. We brought up what she does to us and instantly stopped crying to say, I have never said that. And the go back to her tantrum until Granny finally said she was sorry for hurting her feelings. Nah, nah. Granny should have stepped down and gave her a whipping. Smacked her ass. Uh, entitled Aunt and I go on trips that she pays for often. And on one of these trips, she got really exhausted due to the burning Orlando heat. And we aren't used to. We head back to the hotel and my granny called to see how we were doing. I calmly told her how we were good, but we had to head back to the hotel because Entitled Aunt got too hot. And I think a bit dehydrated, Gran of course panicked and began to call Entitled Aunts repeatedly to check on her, even though I told her she was fine and uh, taking a nap. After about the fourth call, Entitled Aunt glared at me, answered the phone angrily to talk to Granny, and slammed her phone down. She then yelled at me for probably telling Granny something dramatic like I always do, and for worrying about her. The next day, I took a seat at one of the parks because she, because my feet start to hurt. Entitled Aunt goes, are you tired? No ma'am. Are you dehydrated? No ma'am. Then why did you do that to me when I was fine? Doesn't feel good, does it, drama queen? What a way to enjoy a vacay, right? I mean, that was still a vacation that the other person paid for. And you know how this person's attitude is, so you kind of threw yourself in that hole, sadly to say for that part. But, Entitled Aunt to took me to see the touring production of Dear Evan Hansen. This year at my town Civic Center, early this year, I was very excited because I wanted her to see it, to see it really bad. Or I wanted her to see it real bad because of the things I strongly uh, relate to in the story. I had very dark times at a young age like Evan and Connor and wanted the best of my family and especially for Entitled Aunt to see how hard it is to talk about serious topics like, like that when your family just won't take the time to actually listen. Something she did very very often sadly which is why it's so hard to relay my emotions to her as well as her calling me dramatic every time I have a problem while waiting on waiting in the queue. I made friends with a huge group of people all because of three of us wearing a jacket by a streamer we all enjoy. We were super nice and I wanted to tell my aunt I took over, I look over my shoulder and she is glaring at me and leaves and leaves to go to our seat without me. I low key, I low key made me rip myself away from my new friends just so I could catch up to her. When I told her about them, she just scrolled on her phone and said, okay. I just shrugged and hoped for the best for after the musical. It was amazing by the way, definitely recommend it. Afterwards I asked how she enjoyed it and she said she liked it, but it really did not seem that way. She was very dismissive and kinda angry acting, but I don't know about, but I don't know about what. Still I hope for a chance to share my emotions after asking her favorite character in the show. She said she related to how the mom always did what she could to give people the life they wanted. And I, and I say I get it and that I relate to Evan because he did the same thing while still struggling with his own internal fear and feeling the need to keep up a persona so others were happy. She nodded. I hope she would get what I meant and talk about it. And she says this. The rain out there really got on my hair bad. I worked, I worked so hard on this look and used so much hairspray. I hope it doesn't ruin it. Yep. Great. Thanks for listening to my feelings after you shared yours. Appreciate it. Okay, so these were the minor tidbits. Okay, okay. Thanks for the air scent, but I don't have lungs. Exactly, La, exactly. Who has lungs nowadays? Let's be honest here. Who needs to breathe? I know, right? As you can see, I have a few reasons as to why I'm honestly slightly afraid to speak to Entitled Off because of her attitude. 
about things myself and other family members feel. Each time we want to talk about something exciting that we enjoy, she dismisses it by going on her phone, talking over us, or looking around to talk about something different. Whenever she visits, it's to talk about how she's been what she's she's been up to. Her plans for her plans for trips for herself, her problems, her dog, her memes that she posted on Facebook. Just nothing but her. Not to check on her mother, who she just found out caught a bad cold two days ago. Not to see how her niece projects to get to college or how her niece's projects to get to college are going. Not anything that involves any of her other family members, like her brother or sister, my mom. She just wanted to talk about herself the whole time. If you think that alone is bad, imagine working with her for nearly four years. I was offered my first job at 17 by Entitled Aunt to work part-time at the mall. She worked in for, se for seasonal. Since it was my first job, she started me out at minimum wage of my, for my state is $7.50 an hour, where seasonal was supposed to last from October to February, and instead went for almost a year, till I was at the end of my high school year so I could focus on studies. That, and I was getting... And I was getting exhausted by her and how she treated me compared to her other staff members. While the other five people on staff only had to get one or two credit card applications for our store, I had to get seven or eight. The others gotta go on break even though they just clocked in. That's fine, chaotic sensation can cover your breaks before she uh, takes hers. The boxes are too heavy, not a problem. Chaotic may not be able to reach hardly any of the shelves, but I can make her climb up a rackety ladder by herself while holding up a 50 pound box with her. What did Entitled Lamp do? Sit in the back computer, scroll on her phone, and go outside on several smoke breaks? Ah, now we're in the real meat and potatoes of bullshit behavior. I've had bosses like that, they fucking suck. After I got out of high school, I knew I needed to find work, and my granny, who I lived with to help take care of her like she did me all my life, said I should work again for her entitled aunt. I didn't want to, but I did because I was desperate and she was a free ride to work since I had not gotten my license due to the personal reasons. And for the next three years, it was more of the previous year's stuff as well as getting her food on her lunch break, entitled aunt gave me her card, picking up her packages at other stores, picking up her mail, dropping off forms for security guards, for her taking out trash, you name it. She was overworking me to the bone every shift and even and even took it so far as to schedule just the two of us some days when that happened she was always in the back or out smoking while i had to handle all the customers straighten the store sweep the floors clean the glass door all all of it by myself till closing time it was miserable ah oh, lazy ass fucking bosses ah oh, we we love to see the lazy ass bosses hell yeah mm-hmm Whenever I told Entitled Aunt about how it was too much work she was putting on me to only be paying part-time pay, and a very small sum of money for that, she turned it around and talked and talked about what a great job I'm doing and how if I could drive, and how if I could drive, she would make me a manager of that store. When I repeatedly told her that was not at all what I wanted, I wanted a legit career that I'd be happy in, and the retail scene wasn't my passion at all. Like, it is hers. I told her to please ship the work to some of the others, and the entitled aunt said, You should be honored that I trust you with this much to do. It's a sign that you are doing a good job. You're just being dramatic and saying this because you hate me. I told her that it's not true, that it's not true, that I hate her, and she continued on that train and cries all the way home until I finally feel like it's my fault and I'm forced to apologize instead. Instantly the tears stop, alligator tears, and the next few days she refuses to talk to me. That was our routine, not just for the next four years of working with her, not just the next four years of working with her, but also what it's like with families for the past several years that I can't remember. Ah, yes, the gaslighting. Ah, everyone enjoys some good gaslighting, right boys? Yeah, that's some good shit. Earlier this... Early this year, I finally got my license, and not just that, but I was also offered a job interview with my town's mayor. Oh! It offered almost double my current pay, insurance, which I never got at the mall, 8 to 5 every Monday to Friday, vacation time, and a ton of other benefits on my off day. 
I got to the interview and it goes amazingly well. I was so nervous, but I did not let uh, I did not tell literally anyone I knew except my granny about the interview because they said they had other people to interview and I did not want to give anyone false hope or appear to be a fool if I did not get the job. A weekend after the interview, I am offered the job and I accept it. I was so excited to get this job after and get this job offer and start as soon as possible. Yo, that's actually a pretty good gig, getting a job in the town there. That's, that's really damn dope, actually. Uh, then I remember Entitled Aunt was coming over to the house any minute for me to hem up her pants before she went out to eat with one of her other managers. I never told her about the interview a week ago, let alone my license. I knew she was going to be pissed when I told her that I got a new job offer. Granny tells me to just stay hopeful and that she will be so proud of me after getting a job this big. After only working retail for so long and at such a young age, I was still 20, turning 21 in two days. I hope that was true because I just wanted Entitled Aunt to be proud of me and it's my aunt, not my manager. I took a deep breath and here EA is. As soon as she walks in, I beg her to please not be mad as I explained the job offer and I accepted that I accepted. How I did not know I'd get accepted and two weeks? Two weeks. EA yelled, putting a finger in my face. I explained how this was my two weeks and how I was currently typing out a full two weeks notice. She scoffs. She scoffs, goes to change, and looks at me saying, I won't need your help anymore. Okay, so I guess she fired him right there? Like, th that's the only vibe I'm getting, right? I have a feeling something bad's gonna go on. Uh, Grace said it seemed to be going well. Oh, Grant said it seemed to be going well, but I told her that I knew her tone of voice and how she is absolutely pissed. EA comes out of her, comes out in her outfit and refuses to look at me. I sit there in shame, hoping that she will just leave and stop making me feel worse by her not even wanting to look at me. Then she speaks up. Listen, I'm not upset that you got the job. I'm upset that you did not tell me about the job. I am your manager. I take so much priority over everyone else in the room. I would think that for everything I've done for you, you'd have more respect for me to tell me that you were even applying for a job. I'll be honest if he did. Uh, okay, with what I've heard about this person's behavior, I can bet you right now that if that person did tell him about the job, they would have demanded to be one of their references and instantaneously just shit talk about them the entire time. Personal opinion from individuals I've personally experienced that were like this, that's usually what they try to do. I tried to tell her how I did not even tell my mother or my boyfriend, biggest supporter of my life for the past nine years of our lives, and she just dismissed me saying that those people don't matter at the end of the day because she's my manager and she takes top priority. She then begins to cry and screamed at me saying, Great, now my makeup is running. My night is ruined. Thanks for that. I could not believe what I was hearing because I told literally nobody about my new job until I was actually accepted into it. My aunt's special night out with the girls was apparently ruined. My small bit of good news to move up in the world was instead all about EA's personal feelings about herself. I went silent for a long time after she said that, and she told me repeatedly how I was so selfish, how I was, so how I was an inconsiderate child for doing that to her, how I was needed to train, how I was needed to train any new, any new people that were to take over my position, how this brought so much inconvenience to her, and how she hopes I'm happy now for being so selfish. I know I'd be, I'm be honest. <laughs> My granny tried to explain to Entitled Aunt the same thing. I was trying to say that she yelled at her saying... And I was trying to say that she yelled at her saying, Mother, shut up! Stop defending Chaotic like you always do! You should be getting on her! You do nothing but take her side for everything! Bring my, bring my grandmother almost to tears. That was when I had enough. Ooh, ooh, they about to, they about to get at her. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, let's go. Let's go. I stood up and told her to never talk to her, talk to her own, mo her own mother like that. And what the heck is wrong with you? She yelled at me, asked again to stay out of it and to stop acting like I was, 
groan when I had no idea how much pain she is in because of me. I shake my head and tell her exactly how I felt for the first time in over 16 years of this type of treatment. I knew this, this was how it was going to go. I knew that you would not be proud of me and how you'd make it all about yourself. This is something to improve my own personal life, especially to pay bills around the house. I wish that I could say I never knew you'd be genuinely... I wish I could say I knew you'd be genuinely happy for me, but of course I would be a liar. You do not know our you do not know our family did not know, my friends and partner did not know, but instead of the rest of the world, you only see you. I want to actually do something with my life, not to just stay stuck in retail for over 30 years like you. I want a future, a career, a true job where I was happy to walk into work. Sadly, I don't think you even want that for me either. Lol. Well deserved. EA then yelled at me to go in my room and shut myself away from her like I always do after she tried to be so nice to me. So I did. As soon as I shut the door, I could still hear her talking about how selfish and terrible I was, and it brought me to sobbing uncontrollably. I wanted to make my aunt proud of me, but instead it was only met by an angry manager. Yep. The next few days at work are hell. The EA refuses to even look or talk at to me except to tell me give me your exact last day or take out trash or I'm leaving an hour before you do see you in the car she was so angry with me and I am crying every time I'm alone my birthday rolls around and EA doesn't even call to wish me a happy birthday or say or say it to me in the car the day after my birthday this year has been held because of me be being forced to remember all night how I ruined EA's night with my good news I was heartbroken yeah. It's been a month now since I got this job and I love it. It's interesting work, the people here are super kind, and the fact that it's a 5 minute drive from home compared to the 30 to 45 minute drive at the old job is a huge plus because of gas. Entitled Aunt still kinda doesn't talk to me much and hates for me to talk about how interesting and good the new job is. She changes the subject each time when I talk about it, such is life. And she told me she is now down to only four people on staff because a couple more people quit after I did. She can't get anyone hired because no one shows up for interviews, and she now has to work every day of the week. While I am sorry for Entitled Aunt, I'm still shaken up and I'm having a hard time forgiving her fully for the horrible things she said for her abuse of power over me in the workplace. I hope people do come and start working for her, but that will never be me again. I may help with inventory next month, but I'll be damned if I ever have to work for her part slash full time ever again. Thanks for reading this again. I'm sorry for it to be such a long read. Okay. I see this is the meat and potatoes I was looking for. This is the kind of good shit I want. Yeah. This this is not a person that's worth forgiving. This is literally someone that's taking complete advantage of human of human beings and then trying to take as much advantage of them as they possibly can. Oh my gosh. Messi just lo just recently lost a boss that is a pretty close ex uh, comparison of this entire lot, except uh, not in the top, but... Hey, I can't manipulate you if you get another job. Exactly, Law, exactly. Like, come on, man. Some people really know, need to, like, calm their shit, you know? They really just, uh, they really just be losing it over here. Just be going a little bit on the cray side, yeah? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, what's another story we can do here? I'm thinking she's entitled to my love even though she turned a blind eye to very obvious abuse. Uh, my mom hit me because she made me cry. Hmm. Which is a go? Uh, we might do one more before we go to the other one. Let's go with... Hmm. Let's do... This one. Uh, once entitled mom gets mad because I worried about her daughter. Mom thinks she's entitled to my love even though she turned a blind eye to very obvious abuse. How my mom hit me because she made me cry. 
My mom lied all my life. Update even after if he's school assaulting me and my brother entire child probably not. Ugh. These are a lot of a uh, hmm. Entitled Karen mom is obliged to, is obligated to my money. Okay, this looks interesting. Now this this I do want to read. It's also an exile, which means it's gotta be a big read. Whoa. <laughs> this is this is my this is my jam right here. This is my jam. Abbreviations here for the post, the Karen mom, the awesome dad, and OP me. They would put themselves as OP. Overpowered. <laughs> Alright. Let's go, let's go, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's enjoy this. To start, I'm a recently unemployed, soon to be 24 year old female. Finding work is a hassle in 2022, with a lot of dead ends in terms of getting interviews and nothing happening afterwards, which is normal, but what am I to do? I'm patient enough with waiting, so it doesn't bother me much to have much free time. So, summarizing, Karen, who is 67, being retired and divorced from Awesome Dad, who is 68 after 23 years of marriage, back in 2018. <clears throat> back in 2018, they both came to the US from Russia back in 60s, mid early 70s, and got together around that time because Karen had a rough life living in a cramped apartment in the city with her extended family. Awesome Dad offered to help her with finances and that's where the story started and ended. Over two decades, uh, Karen's attitude towards Dad changed drastically. Once I was born, getting from loving him to hating him because he doesn't have enough money, constantly getting new jobs every few years and always ins insults him uh, about it when she uh, has the chance whenever in the house or out in public. Dad cares very deeply about me and my well-being while still working a 9 to 5 since I'm still taking small steps to getting the usual things, aka my license, my own job, my own apartment, etc. For context, the divorce was messy. When it came to money, especially Dad lost so much because he had to give it to Karen. More than he could ever make in his entire life. We're a middle-class family, one house in the city, and uh, dad is trying to keep... That dad is trying to keep, and the other that I'm currently living in with Karen. That she owns now since kicking dad out of the property lease that they both paid for together were in the suburbs, who is also struggling to keep it afloat. The, the difference with how is how Karen has powerful peers who would do her bidding, and with a drop of a hat and lend her shoulder for her to cry on when she when things got unstable over how uh, dad who was a financial was in financial turmoil not having any misery in his life me and the family pup being the main source of joy me and the family pup being the main source of joy luckily though he's slowly getting back on his feet and i'm happy for that for all the weird wrong reasons Karen believes that I'm not loving her enough as a mother, so she spoils me with fancy one, with fancy once in a lifetime vacations and cruises to show off affection. And the argument is that she does this for herself, not me. I never get to say my opinion on where I would want to go because I'd be shamed by her for refusing to go on such a wonderful trip with a loving family member such as her. Maybe I'm just uh, going through a phrase, but I don't seem to remember what she did that was considered loving. She broke up the family due to her... Heretics? Hieratics? Heretics? For one thing, she emotionally, maybe mentally... She's mostly maybe mentally unstable, always threatening to be physical and make last minute hasty decisions on anything and everything I do. She once told me a few months ago directly that if dad ever tried to help me with money benefits, she'd purchase a gun and kill dad in front of me when he comes over. Apart from that, she's always she opens his mail, mostly ads for insurance claims, throwing it away, blaming him for not changing addresses fast enough. I comforted her about this, wanting to get the cops involved, and she was scared, almost offended that I would look into it myself to be against her for her actions. It's unbelievable that dad doesn't want me to take matters into my own hands. It makes me sad that she can get away with this. Hmm. 
Okay, things are things are interesting. Things are interesting so far. We're getting some good we're getting some good stuff, some good stuff. You heard it. She was gonna go pew pew. As for me, I pay for my own expenses, tech, entertainment, and food on occasion while being on a budget. What does she do? Complain, threaten, complain some more. I should also add she takes money from me for small things, saying her saying her infamous four-letter phrase, I have no money. Yet she has everything because of dad, the house especially. She buys groceries every day, new cars, pays utility bills, which she cries about like a baby. Takes lavish vacations and cruises to name a few, but lives off her riches cheap. Lives off her riches cheaply as she can get. Like, how can you say you have no money and afford all that shit? What the fuck? Remember when I said Karen spoils me for my undying affection? Well, she did it again buying tickets for me and her without my consent on a cruise scheduled for fall for this year from Rome to Israel. This really bothered me, not because of the location, but because our last cruise together ended in a disaster last month over Mexico. According to her, when I refused to do anything with her as if she didn't exist, the room was a single bed with a couch and balcony overlooking the sea. You can guess where I slept for the week. The couch was comfortable once I wa once it was converted into a bed. Thank you, lovely cabin steward. I did my own thing during the cruise. She did hers. No fights necessary, but I lied. The main issue is that I didn't want to share the bed with her. When you're a young adult like me, you value your personal space over your parents' decisions, so that's what I did. Plus, she snores loud, and she didn't like it one bit. This new cruise would probably end up like the last one, if not worse, just because of her overall power-hungry authority over me. God, I fucking hate those types. I can't deal with people that have to have control over those around them. I do believe that's the worst. Fast forward to today, uh, Karen told me over the weekend to make up my mind and decide if I would go with her on the cruise in the fall. I, of course, said no, I don't want to go. I'd rather stay home and continue focusing on finding work. Maybe getting my license, finally, to which she agreed, saying that it was a reasonable choice. A while later, she calls me downstairs, and this little exchange happens. Oh, no. You know what? You know what I decided? You're going to this cruise with me. Why? I thought that I said I didn't want to go. Yeah, but if you don't go, I lose money on the voucher I paid for. You can pay me back for it. It's only $900. All right, fine, I'll go. Nothing too bad, right? Well, it gets worse. This happens only a few hours after that exchange once she got back home from the store. Oh no. Oh no. I've had it. I'll just take the money from you and go on this trip myself. I don't want to go with you. You can't be serious. I already made up my mind that I'd go so I don't lose my money. Why the sudden 180? Just because I was going to surprise you with a trip to that ugly European boyfriend of yours. But forget it, you ruined my mood. My boyfriend is not ugly, he's the sweetest well-mannered man that can be, but let's continue. For what reason I don't understand why you're being so rash about this. Because you didn't get me a present for Mother's Day. Uh, excuse me, but I forgot. And I never get you anything because of how emotionally abusive you are with your threats. What have I been abusive? Did Dad put you to this? Stop conspiring with him against me. I'm not doing anything wrong to you. I love you. I don't have to remind you of the past. Also, I wanted to surprise you and tell you that I got a job for Mother's Day. So I didn't want to say anything. Don't surprise me anymore. Just leave, you idiot. I don't want to see you. Wow. Uh, having the threat of me losing my assets due to her unnecessary pettiness, I texted and called Dad. Hey, Dad. I don't want to bother you while you're working. I just wanted to talk. Hey, no problem, person. What's wrong? You sound concerned over text. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you that Karen is threatening to take my money over a cruise voucher that I didn't ask for. Another one of those vacations. Oh uh, yeah? Where to? Rome to Israel. We were going in the fall and she has to pay in a few days. 
Lovely place. You should really reconsider. She didn't give me an option to. I had a fight with her just now and said that I'd go with her so I didn't lose money when she suddenly changed her mind threatening to take it away. Wait, does she have access to your money? Yeah, she only takes small amounts because we go out of out of a mani out for manicures and to pay for the pups insurance. It's for the family, right? Then there's dead. She shouldn't have any access to it. It's for you and me only. She shouldn't have any access to it. It's for you and me only. A few minutes later, Dad asks me to confront Karen. She looks pissed, like tomato red pissed. Okay, let's see. I saw what... I saw what Dad did. Why did he take the money? Because you shouldn't take what's not yours, especially such a high amount from me when I can't pay for it myself. What the hell do you mean? That ticket has your name on it and I paid for it, so you owe me. I don't owe you anything. You wouldn't let me decide on whether I would want to go when I did say that I would go. You went on a hissy fit about not wanting me to go, so I took action. Curses at me in Russian. You idiot! You are... Uh, I don't know if that's how I was safe. You bitch! I can't believe that you would betray me like this! You get what you deserve for your constant threats. You want to complain? Talk to Dad's lawyer. Get back here and call Dad so I can get my money back. I have none! Patient! Patient! Lol. <laughs> Things might have slowly settled down now, but after that I cried a lot, texting boyfriend about everything that happened. He was massively in shock over how Karen treats me and suggests that I seriously have to move out so he can help me back on my feet. I'm going to once I have work to pay for accommodations somehow. Whenever it comes around to that, I can better support us and not have to rely only on boyfriend like uh, Karen did and dad all those years ago. I've been living in a seemingly toxic environment that only me and dad can clearly see while Karen is abusing her power on me in the dark and negatively affecting my mental health for years. I would consider finding therapy, but I'm not too sure about if it would really have a good influence on me. I don't know what to do for how long I can keep up in uh, terms of sanity before everything comes crashing down on me again with uh, Karen's threats. I'm not good with uh, ending posts, so that so for looking at mine. Thanks for looking at mine and reading it. Yeah, yeah, this Karen kind of a bitch, real bitch. Like goddamn. Like you know, you know. Uh, I don't know about those types. I don't know about those types. They uh. This bitch only was just like leeching off of the dead and then trying to leech off the kid too. Like, holy fuck. That is insane. Yo, what up, Boomy? How you doing? Hope you're having a good one. Hope you're having a good one. Alright, we did some entitled parents. Sadly, it wasn't the one that I wanted before. If you can, Boomy, try to find me some good um, Reddit threads that like has funny stories. I'm trying to find- I was hoping Entitled Parent had some better stories, but I didn't find any ones that caught my attention too well, sadly. I remember there used to be much better ones where, like, Karen's actually getting their just desserts, but now it's just a lot more... Karen's getting away with it. I don't like- I don't like it when the Karens get away with it. You should never let the Karens get away with their bullshit. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Worst thing you can do. You should never allow the Karens to get away. Okay, what were some- Am I the asshole? How about green text? What's green text? Is that a Reddit thread? Let's take a look here. What's green text? Oh. Oh, it's one of those things. I mean, I could check those out later. I'm gonna follow this thing. I'm gonna join this and uh, read those a little later on. It looks interesting, it looks interesting. 
Your boy needs a bottle of tequila and 20 hours of sleep. Graduation we can kiss my booty hole. Understandable, I get that pain, Boomy. That is an understandable pain. I feel you there, my dude. I definitely feel you there. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Stories from 4chan, they're really funny. Oh, that's 4chan. Oh my God, I've never actually been to 4chan. <laughs> that's a hole I'm pretty happy that I've never fallen into. I am gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you that for free. I'm actually fairly happy I have not gotten into that rabbit hole. But well, yeah, no, I, I'll check these green text posts every now and again later on though. No, 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 that sounds interesting, that sounds interesting. Yeah, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, for some am I the asshole. See, these things are like booming. There's a lot more attention on these ones. Um, am I the asshole for overreacting about how everything went down on Mother's Day? Ooh, Mother's Day post, hell yeah. Okay. Uh, my friends and my husband both state that I'm overreacting here and have never felt more invalid in my life. So I need un I need unbiased feedback. Okay, friends and uh, husband. Okay, double whammy. Double whammy. Both the friends and the boyfriend or husband. I sip some wine for this. Mm. There we go. All right. I have two sons from my previous relationship, 12 and 9. I've been with my husband for eight years. My children's father passed away six years ago in a car wreck, and my husband has since made multiple points to bring up adopting to bring up adopting my children. I only bring this up because of one of my friends who I now have cut off stated that they aren't technically his kids, and that is why she states I'm overreacting. She calls my kids his babies. Okay, I'm sure there's gonna be some context later. Uh, maybe it's an exclamation point battle? The battle royale is an exclamation point battle royale, if you're talking about that. Right, well, anyways, anyways, I've been pretty mentally depleted and pouring from an empty cup for some months now. Wait a second. I forgot Stream Raiders, no! Uh, uh, real quick, I'm just gonna put this over here. Um. You know, I, hey, I totally forgot about Stream Raiders, fuck. Um, let me just uh, open this up real quick and uh, put it in here over here. Uh, don't rush me! I didn't totally forget about this. Place five mages, I'll put a mage in then. Okay, let me do that real quick. Uh, where is the mage? Where's the mage? That's a healer. Uh, there's the mage. We'll put you right here. Okay. There we go. I, I totally did not get distracted and not remember this thing. Well, there we go. There's that. Uh, I should have a Stream Raiders thing over here, too. Let me just get that real quick. Um, I'm totally not losing it right now. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Oh, nope. That's not what I want. Uh, this? There we go. There's a timer. Ah, timer's not where I want it to be. We'll put you over here, maybe? I might get in the way of the post, but... Uh, uh, I mean, I'll just put it over here, then. Down here? In the corner? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it down here in the corner. I'll leave it right here in the corner. We put baby in the corner, and now baby's staying in the corner. There it is. Wait. Oh, did I go backwards? What? Well. Okay. Anyways, I've been pretty mentally depleted and pouring from an empty cup for some months now. I'm just overwhelmed and feel like everyone, including my husband, expect me to fix all their problems. And it became a lot. Like, my husband is constantly asking me to come up with solutions for him and... Then my kids, on top of that, I just need a break. So on Mother's Day, my husband watched the kids while I took a nap. What would have thought, you would have thought I was in a freaking coma or something because I laid down at 11 a.m. and didn't get up until 7 p.m. I clearly needed it. When I woke up, I will admit that I was immediately peeved. 
I didn't smell dinner or anything like that, so I asked my son, my husband if he had made the boys anything to eat, and he said he just gave them a cup of soup noodles versus make dinner. So not only did my kids not eat the food that I had specifically unthawed because my husband didn't feel like cooking, he hardly ever does, but I also didn't have any food for when I woke up. I just thought I was incre I just thought it was incredibly selfish and inconsiderate, mainly due to the fact that he didn't want to cook because he was playing video games. I didn't get any cards or gifts or anything, all I did was take a nap, so I was trying to push this out of my head and not make a big deal about it, like desperately because it just felt like once again a day that was supposed to be dedicated to appreciating me didn't turn out this way. But I was trying not to see it that way. Well, shit hit the fan because I say I'm going to get myself food because I was starving and my husband immediately asked to go get him something too from a different place. Clearly, clear across town, I make a snarky comment about it's Mother's Day, you should be going for me. He, st he starts huffing and puffing about it because he's also playing video games but gets up to go but gets up to go. He came back with something I didn't want because he thought I would like it and later admits that he didn't actually have money for the thing I wanted, steak and shrimp, which is pretty price, which is kind of pricey. I asked him how he didn't have the money for it because we had over 400 in the bank and the day before and he tells me that he sent his mother $250 to pay her car note for Mother's Day and a big bouquet of flowers that cost him $40. Again, all I got was a fucking nap, so I was pissed, but like I said, everyone is saying I'm being overdramatic about this and being an asshole for blowing this out of proportions. No! No! He- She's not the asshole for this, and I will tell you this one reason! The parent, that guy, the husband's parent, his parent, someone who should be, who raised him and should be capable of taking care of themselves. It could be one of two things. One, if they were at an age where they are no longer able to financially take care of themselves and do payments for a car, they shouldn't have a car. So, since they have a car, they should be capable of financially taking care of themselves. So I'm gonna say that right now. That $250 that he gave the parents with, also, without considering the the wife's opinion on that either, is complete bullshit. I think that's an asshole move made by the husband. And the fact that during Mother's Day, he decided to play video games and make cup ramen for the kids. When he had already had, like, food that could have been cooked. And he decided not to cook it. Like, this lazy little shit, goddamn. Like, I get it. I know that during the weekends, you just want to lay down and chill out. But sometimes you gotta do shit, and you gotta stop being a lazy prick and actually fucking do it. So, no, I do- I don't think they're an asshole for saying this. I do think that the guy, especially during a holiday for a mother, should get their head out of their ass and do something. Especially when you were so considerate to spend, what is that, $290 that even you don't really have on your own mother? Like, having $400 on your bank account as it is, is not the best thing. Especially with what it seems like they're in, they're reaching their later 30s, maybe mid 30s. So, like, even with the kids, like, even if it was like an 18 year old pregnancy or something, one of the kids are 12 and the other one's 9, which means that either they got the kids really young, having it be that the dad died six years later, I kind of doubt that, meaning that they're nearing, they're probably around closer to middle age, around 40, 45. And their bank account has only $400. Like, that's a shitty fucking situation. That means that they're already in some financial situations of their own, and they should not be they should not be worrying about helping someone else at this current moment in time. So I do think it's an asshole move that he spent two more than half of that, three-fourths of that, on his own mother and didn't even have the gall to help his wife. I think that's bullshit. I think that is a dick move. I think the asshole is that husband. Just to say. Just, just putting that information out there. Why 
why they think they might be the asshole. I feel like an asshole because I know I shouldn't expect much and his mom is struggling financially, so I understand why he would want to help her the way he did for Mother's Day, but I didn't get shit like at all. Help keep the sub engaged, don't download, the, don't download assholes, do upload interesting posts. Okay. No. I, I, I gave the right explanation for that before. The fact that that is their parents, and these people are in the mid, their middle age, which means that those, if those parents are in an age where they can't financially support themselves, they should not be needing a car either. Like, if they can't financially take care of their own car, especially when they're past their middle age, like, that, that's on them. I'm sorry to say, but they can't just... No, no. They find themselves a job and they pay for that shit if that's what they want to keep. Especially since they're doing car payments. It makes me think that they bought a brand new car. Ah, <sighs> yeah, no, 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 no. There's always a thing when it comes to families. And there's one thing that I will always say. The child should never be supporting the parent unless they're in an age where they no longer are capable of physically taking care of themselves. But the fact that they still have a car that they are legally capable of driving means that they have competency to drive a vehicle. And if they're competent to drive a vehicle, they should be competent of paying their own bills. I'm telling you that right fucking now. So, this financial struggling bullshit has to have been by some bullshit they caused that caused them to fall into that turmoil. That they should be capable as competent adults to take care of. And that's all I'm gonna say for that. So the fact that this guy did that to his wife, I think makes him an asshole. I'm, I'm, that, there's my opinion. That's all, that's all I'm gonna say about that. that. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But my response? No, they're not the asshole. They were just wanted a day off. And for what it was sounding like, it was well fucking deserved. Am I the asshole for going off on my wife after she had us up? Am I the asshole for going off on my wife after she made a sex sign to keep my mom from knocking on our bedroom door? Okay, that just sounds like being considerate. I'm gonna tell you right now, just from what I'm hearing in the title. Have you guys never had roommates before? Like, when you have a roommate and you're going to fuck in your room, like, you put a sock on the door or something to let them know that that's going to happen. It's like a universal sign, sock on the door, hat on the door, something on the door, just to let them know, maybe don't be allowed to fuck and let me fuck. So. Nobly, I had a roommate that was also not the best and he never got the science or understood it and just mm, <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Made for funny moments, but you know how it is. So. Am I the asshole for get going off on my wife after she made a sex sign to keep my mom from knocking on her bedroom door? Right now from that, no. Even if it's your own parents' house. But I also, you're 26 living with your parents. Ah. No, no, times are tough nowadays. I can't get them at that. But, you know, if you're going to be that age and live with your parents, you better have a sign to let your parents know you're fucking without them, like, knocking in the middle of the act. You know, you don't want that to happen. Some people asked our, some people asked our ages. I'm 26 and my wife is 25. Wife. And we have no kids and are waiting until we save up some money before we start trying for one. So I took a lot of nicer comments here to heart, so I took action. First, I sat down with my mother and tried to get to the route of this to route of this issue. She told me that she's been doing this as she's she told me that she's been doing this as she's just been so lonely and she wants to feel connected to her. Only flesh and blood she has left. Wait, what did the mother say? First, I sat down with my mother and tried to get to the root of the issue. She told me that she's been doing this as she's just been so lonely and she wants to feel connected to her only flesh and blood she has left. I guess something happened to the father. This made me really feel for her, so I went to my wife to apologize and try to negotiate something. My wife... To negotiate something. Uh, my wife, however, told me she told me she that she doesn't want my mom living here anymore. I tried to see if she could just let her stay one more weekend, but she rejected. Uh, I am very confused now. So, 
So is the mother living with them or are they living with the mother? This is going to be interesting. Me and my wife sat her down and told her that we felt like she needed more privacy from her, that we needed more privacy from her, so we asked her to leave for the time being. This set my mom off. She started crying and accusing my wife of trying to her words break us up. Um What? I felt bad, like awful. I tried to just uh, talking to her and I wanted to get the route of why she felt like she needed to be here. She said that now I'm her only flesh and blood alive, and if my wife keeps me wrapped around her finger with sex, I'll forget all about her. So she was trying to interrupt that? So the mother's like purposefully interrupting the sex? What the fuck? She also was worried that if I get my wife pregnant, I'll be too busy with her to see her again, and I'll be stuck with my wife when I could uh, do so much better. This made my wife very upset and told my mom that I think she needs to leave. The crying turned into full-on bawling and yelled at my and yelling at my wife. Eventually I was able to get her out. I told her that I didn't think it's best that we speak until she gets over her issue about my wife. Now looking at this, I feel awful. I had a I had a presence who actually wanted my wife gone and didn't want us to be intimate or have couple time. And on top and to top it off, I argued with my wife. She wanted to remove said presence. Like I said, I won't be contacting my mother until she apologizes and accepts it. And I don't think she'll be staying over anytime in the near future. I will also be spoiling my wife rotten until I can make this up to her. So... Why did, throughout all of this, the mother sounded like the girlfriend more than the actual wife? I'm not the only one that saw that, that thought that, right? Uh, like, I'm not the only one... I can't be the only one that saw that, right? Like, the mother was trying to treat the relationship with her son like a... Like a... Like, like the relationship. Like, the... What? What? <laughs> I don't... I don't... That is... Holy fuck. Uh... No, that, that, that was literally a parent just trying to be... Like, they got in a way in the intimate life with their family. Like, that's already a no-no. They should not be doing that. They should... But then the way that the... Her trying to say that sex is forcing the husband to be under control of all of it, and then when they get a kid, it's to disconnect from her. Like, sorry to say, mom, but when your baby boy has the baby of their own, they're gonna be too busy for time with their own mothers, because they're too busy being parents of their own. That's just kind of how it is. Also, Law, I think you put it in Mezzi's meme channel, because I do not see it in my meme channel. You're gonna have to uh, find that and post it there. Um... <laughs> Uh, damn. Well. Ah, also Law Drew Scrub. Cute. Let's open this. Look at this! Law Drew me! It's cute! I don't know why, is this, why I have it this size. What the fuck? Uh, computer? There we go. Uh, yeah. Look at that! It's the boy! Yo, this looks dope! Hell yeah! I love it, love it, love to see it, love to see it, hell yeah. <laughs> mm hmm, mm hmm. Yee, lar, hell yeah. Dope. Oh, they put it in the right one this time. Okay. Uh, check me channel again. There it is, I found it. Oh gosh, it's awkwardly sized. Uh, let me just do this real quick. Uh, do, do. 
uh, being me 17 when rock band came out read about rock band online every day watch rock band videos every day too old for christmas but really want rock band brother has a ps3 but it's in his room no other consoles in the house let's ag he agrees to let me use his ps3 in his room if i were to get it for christmas Fast forward Christmas Eve, beg mom to let me open the one gift early. It's Rock Band for 360. I'm so depressed because it means I won't be playing Rock Band in Christmas after all. I got it for the wrong system? Aw, uh, I'm sorry. Here, you can open one more. It's my very own 360. Best Christmas ever. Yo! We love to see it. Love to see it. Mom got us with the surprise whoopsie to actually make it not a whoopsie. Let's go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's some good shit right there. Let's fucking go. <laughs> love to see it. Love to see it. Yo. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Alrighty, Lyle. I'll catch you later, my dude. I wonder if all the green text ones are like that. If it is, I might check a couple of those. Maybe. Oh, no, that's true. Oh, no, time. Another day, another time, another, uh, another situational situation that causes situations of what I'm situating, you know? Ah, uh, situational situations. They kind of just come and go. They kind of do what they want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am I the asshole for demanding to use my brother's stuff? Nah. Am I the asshole for blindsiding my son's mom with custody papers after a social media post? For blindsiding my son's mom with custody papers after a social media post. So, I'm um, guessing it's divorcee. Yep, my ex. Mm hmm. Hmm. We're reading it. Okay. Oh, it's a short story, too. Nice. Am I the asshole for blindsiding my son's mom with custody papers after a social media post? My ex and I have a very fragile relationship. I focus more on the kids than her. She remarried and I don't care for her new husband, but I accept it because they had a baby. Currently, my ex and I share 50-50. My eldest son, who is eight, needed to have a circumcision. It was something that I wanted to keep under wraps because it's private. Lo and behold, my ex's husband posts pictures of my son in the hospital and announces that he had a circumcision. And my ex does the same on Facebook. I was outraged and asked them to take it down. Their profiles are not private. They're friends with our kids, teachers, and sons, pa friends, parents. If this was a broken arm, then I, would have car then I wouldn't have cared. Both refused, so I spoke with a lawyer who said that I should seek to reduce her custody. She was served on her birthday and was pretty upset. I assume she spoke with a lawyer because they not only took down the post but made it private. I'm sure we'll end up going to mediation. Yeah? No, no, not wait, no. He's not the asshole. The wife and the ex the ex-wife and the uh, her boy are though. Who the fuck posts about their kids' circumcisions? Like is that actually a thing? I, uh, that's a, that's a yikes from me, dudes. So that's a, that's a yikes from me. Uh, I, even as a streamer, I don't post everything that goes on in my life because, you know, sometimes I like the private things that happen in my life to stay private. You know, sometimes some people, they do some weird things. Huh. Huh. I'm like reading titles to like see if anything catches my attention. Am I the asshole for walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mom standing there with her luggage? Huh. This could go either or. This could go either or. This could have this could be a early connection of the story about the mother who tried to control their lives. Let's see. No, not that she's in her 30s, not the same as the other ones. I, female 30, didn't have the base relationship with my husband's mom. Since day one, she tried to make remarks and compare me to her... 
and compare me to her. She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do and sometimes even copying me like that one time when she literally dyed her hair purple just like mine. And when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked, she actually blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her. Uh, so anyways, my husband and I took two weeks off work to go visit some places out of the country, tourism in, our, in other words. Thing is, I was the one who saved up for, the, for and arranged for the trip. My husband was responsible for booking the tickets. My husband's mom wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums when I said no. She called, texted, sent people to talk to me into letting her come, even threatened to call the police and make some complaints up to get us to stay if she can't come? What the fuck? My husband said he should just, uh, that we should just take her, but I told him he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place. He gave me an ultimatum, said he wouldn't go if she can't come, and I told him I'd uh, gladly call his bluff, which made him take his word back and say, Fine! I will tell her to stop it because he won't tell- because he we won't take it. Take her. Oh god, something- but, uh, this is gonna be one of those mama's boys. This is gonna be a mama's boy story. Things got quieter, suspiciously quieter. The day of the trip came and we got to the airport at 2 p.m. My husband was walking ahead of me and was looking left and right like he was looking for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He, lead, he led me to the waiting room and first thing I saw was his mom standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spot. I felt a cold wave washing over me and I was fuming inside. She and my husband were hugging. That's when I quietly turned around and started walking towards the exit. My husband followed me while shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me, but I told him off and the, har the harshest way possible. He tried to say I was overreacting and that his mom was there anyway, and I should let it go and not mess the trip up for us. I told him he and his mom would still go and I was going home. I went home and sobbed into my dog's fur for several minutes. Turns out he booked her a ticket without me knowing. An hour later, he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful I was to walk out and go home and ruined the trip last minute. I told him he caused this to happen. He said that I was being so hard on his mom, that I was being so hard on his mom is ridiculous. I refused to fight anymore, but he kept on berating me, then calling my family to tell them that the trip was canceled and that it was because of me. My family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself and should have sucked it up and done my best to enjoy it. Did I really overreact? Okay, this may not this may not be a popular opinion, but no. No. As someone who has a very strained relationship with his mother, no, you don't do that. That's a mommy that's a little mommy's boy. That husband should be divorced because he's a little mommy's boy who decided that he couldn't get too he couldn't stay too far away from his mama's tit and needed to like keep her with him at like fucking attached to his fucking hip. Oh my god. Oh I can't stand those types. Ah <laughs> You should never, when you reach a certain age, probably even in your 30s, don't, don't listen to your mother's bullshit. At that point, you should know that your mother isn't a perfect human being. And sometimes, sometimes when you go on a trip with your significant other, it's for you two, not for the whole family. Especially when she's berating her in front of you. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? That's your fucking wife. Don't you, like... Let her get shit on by your mother just because you love sucking her tit so much. Like, god damn. This, this is like the reverse of what the other mom was that where they treated it like a relationship more than anything. Like, that mother-child relationship was treated more like a relationship. And like, this is the same thing but the other way around. But this time, it's the husband seeing that with the mother. Like, oh my god, no. No. Oh, I guess. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a fucking yikes, man. <laughs> Oh, holy shit. Uh, yeah, that's a... <laughs> so here's where all the good stories went. <laughs> that is, uh, I will say, that is some shit, though. God damn. <laughs> that, that, that's all I have to say about that. Um, at a certain point in your life, you have to learn that you don't have, that you don't live with your mother and your mother's not a big part of your life anymore, and you have to accept that. Some people just don't know how to accept that, and they're, those are kind, those types of people are also kind of the worst. Uh, that's just that's all I'm gonna say there, though. So, anywho, back to back to whatever we're doing. Also, I'm gonna put the Street Raiders thing up around here.
here. It'll connect to all of this, right? Yeah, that's right, that's fine. That way it'll be so showing the code behind all that too. Hell yeah. All right, so am I the asshole for buying an extra seat in the movie theater? If it's just to get away from people, no, there, I actually know people that would do this. Uh, but well, let's read the story. Let's see what happens over here. My, my, I might have some estranged bias. Uh, we went to the movies last night. There was still multiple empty seats throughout the theater and a few clusters of empty ones. And where we sat, just right of center, seemed okay. My wife is uh, seven and a half months pregnant and was hesitant to go to the theaters for such a popular movie during COVID, but really loves Marvel. So I tried to make it comfortable for her. We purposely went on a weeknight to avoid on a weeknight to avoid crowding when uh, I booked the tickets. I saw that someone had already skipped a seat on one seat of us, so I purchased a third seat on the other side to give her a bit of breathing room. This theater lets you pick your exact seats when buying the ticket. About halfway through the previews, the next group over from us arrived and one of the guys just sat down directly next to her instead. I figured he probably didn't pay attention on his ticket, so I politely told him he was uh, he had purchased that seat and asked him to move to the, his assigned one, the one seat over. He seemed really confused and asked if the person was running late and said he'd move when he got there. I explained that my wife is very pregnant and I didn't want someone to be unmasked and sitting directly on top of her. So he, so he bought the extra seat for some personal space. He got really annoyed and told me it was a an AH movie to buy an asshole move to buy a seat you don't plan to use because we were forcing him to sit in his own seat a few feet to the right which was not a good not as good a view a view the screen is like 80 feet you can see it well from everywhere his friends joined in mumbling about what assholes we were but eventually slid down one I did switch my wife and she sat on the other side of me, but in this point I was just upset that I had uh, pre-planned something to try to make her uncomfortable. Spent money on it and this, and then this random person felt entitled to stop all over that. Okay, so all I have to say about that- Yo, what up Zappers? All I have to say about that is no, this guy is not the asshole. He was being a good husband and wanted to give room for his wife to have a little extra breathing room. Especially when she's seven and a half months pregnant. Do you know how, you know how like, you look and feel when you're that far ahead? Like, it's not pretty. Like, you also, you are allowed to buy an extra seat at the movie theater. Some people do do that. I know people that do that. They will buy an extra seat in the movie theater just so they have that extra space. People like the extra space. People like extra space and they're more than willing to pay for it. And if they paid for it, that's their reserved seat. They're allowed to have that seat. So when an asshole comes in, so when the asshole who was the movie theater goer that took their spot started talking shit, they could go suck a cock and go back to their seat. That's all that well, that's all to say about that. Like, like that that's a complete dick move on the guy who took their seat because that wasn't their seat. They literally reserved one for themselves and they should have been sitting there. That's the thing about that's the important thing about reserved seats for movie theaters too. <sighs> that, that's my five cents on that though. Like some people just got damn, they just, uh, they just got a bad case of the stupid. I mean, it's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Uh, let's go for this one. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Start the combat. Boom. Boom. So, meme times? Uh, Zappers, meme times is actually reserved for tomorrow. I'm gonna be watching the memes with Salivor Butler and Zero Chi. We gotta be chilling, we gotta be laughing, we gotta be meme reacting, and it's gonna be a good time. Decide to make it a group event. It'll be fun. <laughs> Expect something equivalent to what happened uh, Saturday night. A lot of shit talking. <laughs> uh, the tail end of the stream would be around this time tomorrow. So like 3.30 p.m. EST. Oh, wait, are we gonna win? Yo, we got this? Hey, yo? Hey, yo? Hell yeah? Yo, let's go! I don't know why I was not expecting to survive that. I'm gonna be honest here. I'm gonna be perfectly honest here. I did not expect survival in that. It's 11 p.m. your time? See, perfectly, perfectly ap appropriate time frame. That is, uh, there's no issue there whatsoever. <laughs> oh, yeah, no worries, my dude. 
It shouldn't be too troubling. Unless you work like super late, then uh, it won't be troubling. Or super early. Uh, do I have Vampire? Didn't I have him? Yeah, I do have Vampire. There we go. He's a tanky boy. I'll put a big tanky boy right here. Let's go. Hell yeah. Azimis. Hello, Azimis. How you do? In six hours, I have 12 hour shift. Ugh. Zappers, why are you not sleeping? That sounds like a good reason to be sleeping. That sounds like appropriate amounts of sleeping time that you should be having right there. Understandable. I get that. I feel that pain. I definitely feel that pain. Or used to feel that pain. Before, uh, we'll, we'll call it the before Mezzi era. In the before Mezzi era, I used to run off like three to four hours sleep. Sometimes two. After Mezzi era, era I, I sleep abundant amounts of hours now. Her bed too comfy and knocks me the fuck out. <laughs> just completely out of my control. It just knocks me the fuck out. That bed's just too fucking comfy. This one seems like a landmine of a story. I'm just not going to talk about that one. Um, am I the asshole for responding to my sister's bullying with a hard truth? Hmm. Okay. This title looks like it can go either way. I this this is interesting. This got my this has caught my attention. Okay. My oldest sister has always been abrasive and a hard person to connect with. She. Resented our middle sister her entire life and treated her like shit for practically no reason. Unrelated to all that, our middle sister tragically passed away a few years ago. Okay, unrelated reason. I was gonna say, what the fuck? That's a dark fucking turn right there. <laughs> it hit us all really hard, but especially me, since we were extremely close, best friends, and did everything together. Since then, I've tried multiple times to rekindle my relationship with my oldest sister, but we just don't connect like that. Damn, that's already a, that's already a tough thing. All right, zappers. The last few months, my oldest sister has been angrier and meaner than usual. When she's in an angry mood, she'll say and do anything she can to hurt you, including things as extreme as telling me my middle sister hated me and that she wished she were dead instead. Holy fuck! Damn. This all erupted into a screaming match last night, which was immature on my part, but I lost my temper. It ended with me snapping back and saying that she bullied our sister her entire life, and now that she's gone, she needs a younger sibling to bully. I told her she should be ashamed of herself, and I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror if I had treated someone so badly their entire life. That hit her, and she left the house after. My parents were livid as if I had just done something astronomically horrible, and yelled at me for a long time, telling me I had crossed the line. I'm not saying my parents take her side, but they certainly don't hold her accountable for the way she treated people. Am I the asshole? Uh, edit. Just to be clear, my parents' message to me is that I essentially have to be the bigger person here. Everyone knows how difficult my older sister is, and that the way it ha and that's the way it has to be. We're family, and if done. And if I don't be the bigger person, then I'll just be endless child bickering between us. It sucks to hear, but as I've had time to calm down overnight, I think they're right. Edit two. Edit one is wrong for sure. I'm seeing a ton of hate for my parents in the comments, which makes sense for Reddit, but there's a little more context. I love my parents very much. They were very young when they had my oldest sister. They struggled with money and greatly that, and they also struggled with her behavior all through their childhood. They put her in anger and behavioral counseling for a long time. They disciplined her hard as well. They worked their asses off to support a family of five during the economic crash in 2008. They raised me very well and a large part of my academic success is due to them and their encouragement. They were young and inexperienced and while that does excuse the shitty way they're handling the situation now, they're not bad people. Some additional context, I'm 21 and she's 25. I live three hours away at my university for grad school, but I come home frequently. frequently. So are they having this argument while they're 21, 25? Like, here's the thing. Siblings bicker. 
they argue, they get pissy. But when the older sibling drops car drops fucking bombs like what she what this one said, like it is No. What siblings will do, if someone throws a hard punch, you're going to get a harder punch back. That is just how it is having siblings. So when you say bullshit like you did, you better be ready to take just as hard of a punch as someone who's also a, fa a, a family of seven with four other siblings. Yeah, no, you act like an asshole. They're going to act like an asshole back at you and you're going to learn your lesson sooner or fucking later. That's just how it's going to be. That's, that's well fucking deserved right there. Sorry to say, sorry to say, sorry to say, but as someone who's the second oldest of, of siblings, also, when you're the oldest, you are the one that's least allowed to be a pissy little shit. <laughs> it, you know, it's usually the younger ones that are bratty, but this time around it was actually the older one. That's strange. That's very strange. Very, very strange. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was not expecting that turn. I was not. I thought there was gonna be something about like bullying going on to the older sibling after them getting their just desserts of like attitude they did to the middle one. But no, no, the older one's just a fucking asshole. I, I, I get it that they're saying the parents like um, got at them hard on it, but I, I feel like they could have gone a little harder on the pissy first uh, older one. Like the oldest one should never be the one getting being that fucking bitchy like that's a that's a karen in the growing right there <laughs> am i the asshole for not doing anything for my husband i am interested you have gotten my interest had to grow up at a younger age same gore same <laughs> you know you know my story gore we, we have, sometimes you have to grow up in a younger age that's just kind of how things have to go you know you know it's a shit storm, but it happens. It's a, it's a shit storm, but it's our shit storm. <laughs> oh, this is a short one. Cool. Uh, yeah. All right. Am I the asshole for not not doing anything for my husband? Not not doing anything. So is it for doing something for my husband? Okay. We'll we'll see. So my significant and other significant other and I just had a baby. We are both back at work, and when it comes to our schedule with baby, I wake up, take care of him, until work, go to work, pick up baby, and take care of him all night. The normal motherly duties. My significant other gets off work early in the morning, gets uh, uninterrupted sleep until I leave for work. So about seven hours, same as me, but mine is interrupted for feedings. Then he wakes up to watch baby for a couple hours until he drops him off with the babysitter. I have been begging my, my significant other for help because I cook, clean, do laundry, do night feedings with the baby, we bottle feed, take baby to appointments, pay bills, grocery shop, and we both work. Well, I started asking him to feed baby once when he gets home from work so I can get a few consecutive hours of sleep, but he always has an excuse why he can't. So I decided that for the next week I am going to do only mine and baby's laundry, only pick up baby and myself and only do mine and baby's dishes to help my uh, significant other understand a little better why I am asking for help. Am I the asshole for asking for help and deciding to give him a taste of what all, a taste of what all I do? No, that's not the asshole. You're a fucking couple. You're both the parents of this child, so you both better be picking up your own slack of the shit you gotta do. That I'm, I'm telling you right now, I don't believe that one person or the other should be doing most of the work. Especially when it comes to inside the household. If one of us is cooking, the other one better be doing some fucking cleaning. Like, I, I, I can't stand that kind of stuff. I really fucking can't. <sighs> no, no, yeah. Like, they're in a relationship. It's 50-50. They should be able to back each other up. You can't just be like, oh, I'm tired. No, no, no. This is still a, ho this is a household that is shared and you now have a baby. I'm sorry. Your ability to relax whenever you want to went out the window this thick and you got a baby. You now have to take care of that thing together. I know it's going to be a hard time, but you both have to take care of that thing. And if one person's doing stuff, the other person better take care of their share of shit. You can't just sit there like a lazy ass while someone else does all the shit for you. Withhold sexy time. You know that's a good thing. That's a good. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'll, I'll be. I'll be. I'll remember to use that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Once there's a kid. Once there's a kid and there's a fa the family's being made and you have a kid, you better make sure the jobs are split 50-50. Like it has to be set up like that. You can't force someone to do to bear most of the weight of the stuff to do. Like just, just simple as that. 
Simple as that. Simple as that. All I need to say about that. So no, no, she's not the asshole for only taking care of herself and the baby stuff when it seems very obviously the husband didn't do shit in the house. So, yeah, no, no, not an asshole. Am I the asshole for laughing when my cousin said I could support it? Interesting. Interesting. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. I, 40-year-old female, have a first cousin, 34-year-old male, who doesn't work. He used to be a night desk attendant at a small local hotel, but the hotel closed, owner died, descendants uh, decided to sell the property. He has refused to seek work, seek work since then. He says that most, most entry-level jobs that he will consider... He says that most entry-level jobs that he will consider, he won't work for mega corporations or ethical reasons, which I do understand, either require customer service skills, which he doesn't have and doesn't want to learn, his words, or else are really boring. He was offered a stockroom type job at a mom and pop tortilla factory, but thought it would be intellectually unstimulating. His exact words were, I just don't want to have a job. It doesn't seem like I would it would f fulfill me. Oh god, it's one of those types. Oh no. When asked what he wanted to do with his life, he says he wanted to be a published novelist. He has written a few novels and a bunch of short stories, and honestly, they aren't bad. I've read them and found them enjoyable. It's not likely to be sustained as a career. The overwhelming majority of published authors either have a day job or a traditional employed spouse because fiction writing isn't lucrative, but he's not bad at it. So obviously the question is, why the fuck is any of this your business? Okay. There, here's the fun stuff. When he was telling me this unprompted, I did not ask about his career thoughts. He volunteered it. He said that his parents would have uh, supported him until he became a successful novelist, and if they became unable to do so, passed away, or didn't have the money to do so, the family could keep supporting him. At this point I said, er, what? Because most of his, our family, is blue slash pink collar, we don't have huge investments to tap. For X, my parents were... For X, my parents were military enlisted not officer, his aunt is an elementary school teacher, his other aunt doesn't admin work for a local restaurant chain, does admin work for a local restaurant chain. Okay, interesting, interesting. He said, well, you make good money. I thought he was joking and started to laugh. I do make decent money. I went to college for engineering on a scholarship. He's not wrong, but financially supporting my younger cousin for the rest of my life is not what I have any intention of doing with that money. Honestly, since I'm infertile and I intend to do... Since I'm infertile, what I intend to do with that money is adopt and then support a child on my own, as adoption isn't cheap. He was deeply offended and said that since I, w I am privileged financially, that I need to be ready to support him when his parents' money runs out. I said that that was frankly delusional given that he's acting like a one percenter. <laughs> since I know I will come up, since I know it will come up, yes, I have suspected that he's a uh, neurodivergent. So did his uh, teachers all the way back to elementary school. His parents refused to have him even assessed and he currently vehemently insists that he isn't and refuses any ASD or etc type resources on an uncle do have another child who is neurodivergent whose issues they acknowledge and work with I don't think the cousin lives with her is the thing that's not the issue I think it's literally just the cousin thinking that they can uh yeah, I'm just, I want to become a successful novelist, and unlike any other struggling novelist who is working a job while doing their writing, I deserve to be pampered by my mommy and daddy. And when mommy and daddy no longer gives me the money that I am allowed to have, you must pay for me. I'll be honest, I'd laugh too. I'd have laughed on his face. Wouldn't feel bad about it, too. I'd be loud and hysterically just laughing at him. It, it'd have been really funny to me. I'd have think it'd have been really goddamn hilarious. <laughs> that, that's, all, that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. Just, no. No. 
No. No, 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 no. They're not the asshole. They're more than welcome to laugh at them for that comment. Am I the asshole for telling my parents I won't help them with their health problems? Interesting. I am interested. I am interested. I am 28 female and I have an 11 year old kid. I, When I was 16, my parents introduced me to a guy, 22 male, and he pursued a relationship with me. At 17, he messed up with my birth control. He messed up with my birth control pills and I got pregnant. I wasn't educated back then and I didn't know my options that... Well, since I didn't have a good support system around me, so I was left to fend for myself. I stayed with my boyfriend up until I was seven months pregnant, but then he left without any warning, never found his number again or him on Facebook. I was 17 with no job. I went back to my parents' house to live with them, and they refused to help me and told me it's my responsibility to figure this out. They knew of my pregnancy and were really happy and supportive up until I had to move back with them. They denied me any kind of help and support and claimed it was not their responsibility and they would not want a kid around the house screaming and crying. Okay, that's already starting as a that's already starting real bad. Hey. I'm reading on my last little post. It's okay, the stream's almost over. I'm gonna end that previous You wanna sit in the story? No? Okay. Let's you don't wanna hear me read aloud? Get out of your clothes, you want to come hang out? <laughs> okay. Why are you so desperate? <laughs> You're fine by yourself. I just wanted to see if baby wanted to sit with me while I exactly. made the last part of my stream. <laughs> Hi. Also, I'm in a maid dress. That would be nice. <laughs> 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 Come here. You almost got slaughtered. I almost did. You saw a look at my eyes. <laughs> okay. All right, baby. Go get comfy. The stream. I should be done with the stream in like 15 minutes. Yeah, Alex decided to cancel. Aww. He messaged me like, yeah, he said okay. I guess we'll just. I just kind of want to go see my mom. So that's the only thing you can change right now because she had that girl daughter. Oh, yeah. When you go see I, your parents. I was like, I can go. If we wait 15 minutes, I can go. That's what I'm you. saying. Like, I'm letting you know now. Alright. I want to go see my mother. Alright. Okay. I'm saying, okay, why are you still staring daggers at me? <laughs> because Mario crossed me today and I got him. I mean, he was deserving for that. He for said, are y'all looking for me? I said, don't you want me to look for you? And he said, no. <laughs> 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 I teach him how he treats me, and he was like, mm -hmm. he was like mm -hmm. That's how you're supposed to do it. You get them back for your bullshit. Oh, damn it. You know who's a good girl? You know who's a good girl? Me. Yes, you are a good girl. You are too. Too bad you're not bending over. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Says I'll be nice, tells me to bend over. <laughs> Fuck, she's right. <laughs> Love you. Hi. Oh my god, she has sadistic voice on. <laughs> I'm in danger. What am I not? Corgi tried to sneak in. <laughs> so I'm in danger after this. Well. <laughs> Okay, we'll uh, finish. We'll finish this story. Chill out for ten minutes, and then uh, <laughs> I guess that would be it. <laughs> but okay. Okay. Uh, right now, my feelings on this so far in the first paragraph is this was a boyfriend introduced to this girl. By the way, parents introduced this sixteen-year-old girl to a twenty-two-year-old man. Like, what the fuck? What the hell? The finger butt will come. Why, why, why you, why y'all so into me getting probed by my girlfriend? The fuck? <laughs> okay, but also, still, like, already kind of fucky in the start. 16 year old girl was introduced 
by the parents to a 22-year-old male, and then when that 22-year-old male that they introduced her to fucked with her pregnant with her birth control and then got her pregnant, like that is already so much bad going on. And then the lack of support over it when that age being that it's like holy fuck, that's already going bad. Okay, so I went to stay with my best friend until I gave birth and her parents have been the most loving and supportive. I struggled a lot to get on my feet and get my own place to stay with my kid. I went into community college since financially I was the only it was the only option I had. I got a diploma and now I'm a business and fi now I'm a business and finance and I'm always taking course for to better my skills. I'm now 28 in a really great place financially and mentally and I'm giving my daughter the life she deserves. I don't have much of a relationship with my parents. I contact them once a month through phone and I see them in a per in person once every two to three months. They are retired both above the age of 65. They suffer from multiple health problems and they now expect me to be their full-time caregiver and also pay for any medical expenses they might have. I refused. They insisted it's my duty. I... Well, let me scroll up. I told them that they had abandoned me, kicked me out of the house after the guy they introduced me to got me pregnant and left me two months before I gave birth. They abandoned me at my worst and didn't give a shit of what would happen to me, so no, I am not responsible for them since they decided they weren't responsible for me. I have a kid to raise. I don't want my kid to be around two old people who shit themselves uncontrollably while they can use a bathroom perfectly fine, but they only do it in order to get me trouble. They called me an ungrateful kid and that I deserved being alone. Many relatives have also said that I'm an asshole and unable to leave the past behind. And I'm not respecting my parents who raised me and made sacrifices for me. Of course, a, a lot more was said, but it all boils down to me being considered an asshole for not helping my parents. Am I the asshole? No. They literally introduced this woman at, when she was a minor, by the way, I need to remind, to this adult age person that got her pregnant like not even of her volition it wasn't accepted the guy fucked with her birth control like what the hell who the fuck does that and then and then bails on her in the last two months like that is that is some shit but also just on the parents end as well no that, that's already on the parents end above that they abandoned the kid after like what the fuck no no they can't be they can't request shit they can deal with that stuff, get themselves their own job that they have to find a way to pay for while taking care of their own shit-filled asses. That's all I have to say about that. That's all, that's all there is to say about that. You agree with that, right? Um, Cliff Notes is, uh, she's now 28 years old with an 11-year-old kid. Um, when she was 16, she was introduced by the parents, a 22-year-old adult that fucked with her, preg with her birth control and then got her pregnant. And then two months before she was going to have the baby, the guy bailed, like completely ghosted her. And then when she was going to move back in with the parents, the parents told her that they didn't want a baby in the household, so they kicked her out. And then she stayed with her best friend. Uh, years later, she find, she had a, she got herself a good job, actually was able to take care of her kid, and the parents came back like, can you take care of us, pay for our medical bills, and just be our 100% caregiver now? And then called her under for saying that. Like deserving of shitting themselves and staying in their shit and <laughs> wallowing in it. It could be, that could be Canada, but I have no idea. Threw the subject of minor off the table and just add it, send it, center it on the uh, mess with birth control and person that was introduced by the parents, then deciding not to help the child after this. Like it almost seems like they introduced this kid, the 22 year old, just to get rid of the kid from the house. Oh, that's the way I'm reading it. Well, I mean, some parents also just want to see you with your kid once you home. And it's not because they're trying to get rid of you, it's because they're afraid of you being alone. Yeah, but those kinds of parents also wouldn't kick out their daughter for being pregnant. 
and having a kid. Those are usually the ones that would be ecstatic for being grandparents. Mom would be mine. Mm -hmm. Mom would be mine. You met my mother. You know, I feel, you know, I hear that, but I feel like your mother would be fine. She'd with beat me. my ass, and then she'd beat his ass, and then she'd be like, what? I'm a notary, but I can't marry you because I'm your mother, your aunt's a notary. <laughs> so, shock and wedding. Yes. I tell you, my mother be like... These are reasons why we're going to be married before we start having kids. <laughs> What's the thing about them here? Oh. They yeah, just they have all that help to get Well, no, we have to get my mother to be in that marriage. If we want to, like, marry around because of... Ah. Because legally, that's considered... Cousin who's a teacher? Well, my yeah, he um uh, my cousin who's a teacher knows about it. Then me that fucking okay. hot. Actually, that's not too crazy. There is a lot of a. Uh... Well, no, it was a girl, and she was like, she was like the prize. See, I remember in my old high school, there was two things always going on. You could not turn a corner without seeing a teenage pregnancy. And then there was one of the choir kids who ended up dating the choir teacher. Now, no, no. I was going to say like there's, there was a some sort of thing to explain what's going on a little better, but it, it doesn't. So, they didn't start dating until the student graduated the high school. Person still graduated 17, and the teacher was in his mid-30s. Maybe a little older. And the only reason they found that they got caught is because their dumbasses decided to make out in the teacher's car in the senior parking lot. He used to say they weren't very bright about it. Which is one of those things that stupid people did stupid things and they, they, you know, they got hit with the consequences of the stupidity. Hmm. I'm thinking we have two minutes time. I don't think I have enough time to read a thing, to read any more stories. So what I can do is... Mm -hmm. Damn, Zappers, you really did drop a lot of shit in here. Oh, oh, we made it to the monster fucker license. We are now in safer territory. All right, I'll play a Zapper's video. One, one Zapper's video. Mm -hmm. Although I have a feeling this German video is not the safest one. <gasps> We're gonna watch Chicken Attack. Luca. He was like, oh no. The witch outfit? I completely understand that. I told him to get away, that would be the case. Yeah, we're just gonna have a silly screen. I didn't have anything set up for it to like fit the right way, so we're just gonna we're just gonna deal with this. Uh, this. You know, where's my go with this? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is All the way from Tokyo, Japan, the Yellow Master, Mr. Takeo Ishii. Wait, this isn't chicken attack. Wait, I thought this was chicken attack. 
this is the chicken attack guy though, right? Well, damn. I was expecting something completely different. I didn't get what I thought. <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to see the Grinch is giving me right now. And high expectation to get me in. You really do put the A in R thing. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did you start a fire under the- what? What? I was like it. What the fuck? Look how happy he looks. The chicken guy. The chicken guy made me happy. He's a happy little yodeler. Oh, my bot one. Nice. Okay, I was expecting chicken attack. I was not, I'm surprised that that was the thing, but now we are going to do a stream raid and then that will be the last thing for the day. Do, do, do. Oh, there it is. Okay, we'll just do this then. We'll go with, we'll go high ground. Give these guys high ground. Boom. Combat. Ooh. Oh shit. You might get it? Maybe we got it? Of course it's cringe, zappers. Of course it's cringe. <laughs> not bad, not bad. They put it pretty good. Uh, Azumi's got the most, though. There we go. We got some scrolls, too. Hell yeah. Alrighty, there we go. Now we're gonna find someone to raid. That is it for the stream today. Let's go with... TV. Who's live? Who'll be live? Who'll be live? Uh, ugh. Let's see who's doing the things. Uh, me, me, me. No, I've been wanting to raid this guy, so I'll raid this guy. Little we'll, wolf we'll art tuber. Can I get a big dill cheeseburger? Grill the cheeseburger. Adding the pickle for mute. Are you streaming today? Wait, what? Why? Why are you asking? Them? Oh, Zappers is asking. <laughs> Maybe in a bit. I gotta figure out what I'm doing because Alex canceled because he's not feeling well for this new medication. Mm-hmm. 
So it's a it's a we'll see. Yeah, well, after we plan something, I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So for now, we're going to put this here and give you guys a second to copy that down. Vids if she wants. I mean, you, you could always drop meme vids in her uh, meme section. You have a meme section in your channel, right? Or you yeah. just privately DM it to me. I mean, I don't mind DMs. I mean, true. Also true. So, there we go. Sounds my like fellas. most people, I reply to DMs faster than I do in your channel. She really fucking does. So, alrighty, my fellows. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time. Hasta luego. Bye-bye. chatting about i gotta know welcome i fucking love this remix i don't know why but this guy's voice sounds like todd howard's voice maybe it's because the thumbnail has todd Howard on it but it really does scrub the dub dub hey zapper you're reading reddit stories oh my gosh and now you get to listen to some basil stories you want to hear a cool story i love my dad so much the end I just remembered something involving my dad that I need to do. <laughs> Fuck. Welcome Raiders. Thank you so much for the raid. Also, Hibiscus Tea Dragon, thanks for picking up the scent. Cole Senpai, thank you for picking up the scent as well. Let's, I want to do just like a little bit of coloring. Just